Oh, how the mighty have fallen. What's up, guys? We're here. Welcome back to the channel. So today we are going to be going over a lot of Season 5 changes, buffs, and nerfs that you guys need to know coming up for Season 5. I know it's going to be a short season, but it's going to be an absolute blast. we got a lot to cover, so let's go ahead and break this down. But first, let me say, Rob, I'm sorry, man. Barbarians, how the mighty have fallen. Move them down the list. The Barbarians have suffered major nerfs. So let's break down everything in the sheet that we have for all the upcoming changes. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and break this down. I want, I do want to give, first of all, I do want to give a big shout out to Rob and Don the Crown. They spent a lot of time working on their sheets to give us a lot of very particular numbers and information um, from the... Uh, for the season five changes so they broke a lot of this down particularly the numbers that way we can relate this to you guys so big shout out to don the crown and rob make sure to follow their channels subscribe all their stuff will be down in the description below <clears throat> with that said let's talk about the changes coming boy there's a lot of them okay first and foremost generic changes xp from monster levels are now uncapped 1.5 percent bonus per level higher than the player so this is huge for leveling to 100 and power leveling additional characters because before our cap was at 10 levels higher than the player for the monster level. Now that does not matter. So when you get into world tier four, instead of doing like low level stuff, now you're going to be able to just blast high level pits, high level tier 100 nightmare dungeons and level up these characters incredibly fast. This is huge. Enchanting. This is my favorite one. Enchanting no longer costs angel's breath. So you use the legendary salvage of the same type as it being enchanted. So what that means is if we log in, <clears throat> just so you guys can kind of get an understanding of what that is. So when you enchant, normally it's going to cost the angel's breath plus the gold or whatever it is, right? The other two uh, crafting things, right? When you go to enchant. So when you come over here to enchant, right? You go to enchant an item. It's going to cost the Veiled Crystals plus the Angel's Breath. So now we're going to cost Veiled Crystals, but then it's going to be the legendary um, resources. So it's going to be like potentially Forgotten Souls. It's going to be Coiling Wards, the Baleful Fragments, the, the Sigils. I don't know which ones it's going to be, but it's going to be one of these in addition to Angel's Breath. So we don't have that problem because you can see the numbers here just grinding this season. We have so many of these, so I'm assuming they're going to use these for different levels, right? So that's a big dub. Next, while you are, uh, the average crowd control duration is reduced. Players can use potions while you're CC'd, which is great. So it helps you, you don't die when you're like perma frozen or whatever. So that's cool. Legendary drop rates are increased. World bosses now have resilient damage is effectively normalized, but we're not sure by how much. So what this means is, is that the big HP buff that the world bosses got, now they have resilience. Uh, so damage is effectively normalized. We don't know what this is going to mean as far as like how tough the world bosses are going to be, but I hope it's a better fight, which is good. So there we go. You guys already know about the purple changes to the uh, the beams, right? Mythical uniques all got changed to purple, which is great. Now, this is another big one here. The Infernal Hordes from the PTR for those who got to play. Infernal Horde is going to be the new season mechanic in season five. It was a little underwhelming when we played it and tested it but now there's a lot of stuff changes so now you're going to be able to get a lot of compasses they drop from multiple places here which is really good um you can also craft them with sigil powder which is awesome um now your pet will pick up all your burning aether in there so you don't have to run over it which is great they increase the pace of the mini events as, as well as the spawn rates of the monsters in the infernal horde so this means they're going to spawn faster and the timer has been reduced. So everything should be going a lot faster so you can get through it, right? Which is good. They fixed a couple bugs, which is great. They raised the minimum burning aether per run. So now you get more. And then uh, all aether sources drop two instead of one now. So you can get even more, right? And then this is the big part. They reduced the reward box cost. Now the perma GA box is from 250 to 60, which is huge. And then everything else is down by <clears throat> five, which is just okay. Um, we're mainly going to be using Infernal Horde for GAs. Now, again, there's no additional information as far as like how much more resources we, or excuse me, rewards that we're going to get. But the fact that this has been reduced by this much, now we have a solid reason why we would do Infernal Horde, and that is to get guaranteed GA items. Again, guys, this means you get a guaranteed GA, but it does not mean that you get a GA one, two, or three. Okay, so that is random, but you do get a get one guaranteed, 
which is great. Also, remember that Infernal Horde is the place where you get all the new items that are coming in Season 5. So, big uh, big buff here to the Infernal Hordes, which is fantastic. Um, Helltides. Profane Mind Cages are staying. I tweeted about this. This is fantastic. And now this is needs to be in the game. And now you can stack it three times. So, now you get monster levels increased by 30% or 30 and you get more XP, your cinders, you get more cinders, and your threat meter will all go up much faster. So hell ties are going to be super powerful, not only for just farming, but just in general, right? XP, items, and you'll have a blast. It'll be good. Now, class changes. There's a bunch here. I'm not going to go over everything in particular because I don't want the video to go too long. But let's go over some generals, and then we'll highlight some stuff for each of the classes. So build unique um should be the best in slot for their build generic uniques will be more niche ideally every build is going to be two to four not counting mythics so roughly any build that you can come up with should have two to four uniques in there or slash uber uniques right which is good um that way we're not every single build isn't just uber uniques or uniques which is a good thing uh strength of affixes is balanced versus the strength of the unique effect which is good cross balancing so we got a lot of different changes here um druid necrosork Eight to core stat equals times 1% damage. That's a 25% damage buff. Rogue is nine. A Barbarian's 10. No damage change. So Druids, Necros, Sorks, and Rogues all got their damage buffed. And Barbarians did not receive a damage buff change. These are more like flat damage increases, which is really good. Um, this is to balance the fact that Rogue and Barbs have more weapons. And therefore, they have the ability to stack more items or powers. And all the affixes that are on those weapons make them a lot stronger. So this is huge um just for the classes in general now this is before any additional changes to the class themselves which we're going to highlight below so now barbarian a lot of stuff got nerfed unconstrained walking arsenal umbrella rage gushing wounds all nerfed okay all nerfed okay tempering barbarian protection removed flay duration has been changed to weapon instead of utility so you can't stack two things all right um druid changes Boulder, Cataclysm, Rabies, and Bloodhound all got buffs, which is super good. Um, the key passives. Now, I do know, I talked to DT, my resident uh, Druid main, who's doing nothing but Druid. Perfect Storm and Earth and Might. So, Perfect Storm, Earth and Might, as well as Thunderstruck, Earth and Devastation, and Survival Instincts. These got capped. A lot of these, like Thunderstruck, were uncapped. So, now that they're capped, they did get an increase. This is going to make those builds feel a little bit better, but the fact that they're capped sucks. I really hope that the devs go away from some of this capping and just uncap stuff, but we'll see. Aspects, there's a lot of stuff here. Looks like, um, what is it? Uh, Shred is going to come back in a variation, so this is going to be really good. A lot of this stuff got buffed, which is super great. Um, Grizzly Rage, the Spirit Gen got increased. I don't know what we're going to be doing with Spirit Rage or Grizzly Rage this season, but hopefully it'll make its way back into... Uh, at least a couple builds for Druid because I've really missed it. Rogue changes. Um, Flurry got a bunch of buffs. Okay, Flurry got even more damage buffs. It seems like they really want us to use this. I'm a big fan of the build uh, or the, the skill itself. But I, I don't know. It just seems that like the melee builds for Rogue just aren't really good. So even like Flurry with Andes, it's really Andes doing all the work and not necessarily Flurry or your puncture skill. So, but yeah. We'll, we'll see how this feels. I mean, this, this is kind of nice, but hopefully we'll get a flurry build this season, which would be cool. Exploit weakness got its full change. No witness got changed. The damage cap was increased. Preparation increased. And then the bug fix. This is a big hit for rogues. So Caltrop duration no longer increases the damage from enhanced Caltrops. If you guys don't know, when you would throw down a Caltrops, it would stack the damage. As enemies continue to be in your Caltrops, you could stack it all the way up. I think I got mine on Heartseeker this season, in season four, up to like 230% multiplicative damage. Now, all that's gone. So, duration doesn't work. So, you no longer need to put it on weapons. So, it sucks. But I guess it's a fix to help balance. So, we'll see how that goes. Um, uniques. There's a few uniques here if you guys want to look at this stuff. I'm going to highlight one big one for Sorks, but. Uh, yeah, so Necromancer changes. The lucky hit on all of these have been increased, which is cool. Tempering, Blood Finesse, and Shadow Finesse, all of this stuff got buffed, which is great. Blood Bath, Blood Begets, all uh, increased, super good. Legendary. So, so um, Necromancer got some good buffs here for the Blood Classes, uh, or Blood Classes, the Blood Builds, as well as a little bit more Shadow um, Dot and Shadow Damage increases because that wasn't working correctly this season or in the PTR. So, 
Hopefully that's balanced out now, so we'll see how that plays out in Season 5. Now, down to my class. And a few other creators' favorite class, the Sorceress. So, on top of the... Remember, we're going to scroll back up so you guys can see it. On top of the... The damage here, right? The cross-class balance. Now we scroll down to Sork. And all core and mastery damage is increased by 15 to 20%. Combined with the stat increase is about 50% more damage to Sorks. Hallelujah. Sorks are going to be awesome this season. So everybody, throw away your Barbarians and start playing Sorceress, okay? Hydra got a damage buff. Um, Ice Armor got a buff to the base shield. Warmth is actually going to be really good this season for healing. It's going to help with the fact that Flame Shield is pretty much gone. I mean, Flame Shield's good, but we won't have Perma Flame Shield anymore. So Warmth is really going to help uh, Sorks with survivability with all the healing. Like 3% healing and 12% healing against bosses and elites is, or non-elites is get really good. Um, a lot of DR here from Mana Shield and Align the Elements, which is really good to help with survivability. Uh, key passives. I don't know how good combustion is going to be. It never really was super good, but the burn damage increased. I hope that this is okay. The big change here is shatter because damage from it has been increased, but it no longer received damage from itself. So if you guys don't know, shatter was like really the only way. Shout out to Makuna was the only way that like Sorks could scale their damage, which is the reason why Sorceress with Perma Flame Shield and Shatter Key Passive was doing like 150 pits. It's the only way it worked. Otherwise, Sorks did not have the damage. So that has been changed. So now Shatter will still do some good damage. It's just not going to scale with itself to just do those huge, like, explosions and just delete the screen. Um, items and Aspects is uh, Axel Conduit, which is the new, new um, pants for Sorcerer. There was a bug during the PTR, so now this is fixed. Splintering and Lightning Rod, both of these got buffed, or excuse me, both of those got buffed, which is good. Snow Veil now has been changed. So before you used to get 30% armor, now you're still going to be unstoppable, but you're getting 25% damage reduction, which I think is better because it's so easy to hit the armor caps now. So this is really, really good. Um, Paragon stuff. Now, this is a huge change here, so pay attention. Burning Instinct, Chris Strike uh, bonus cap increased, changed to 1% per in 20 intelligence. Ceaseless Conduit also changed per intelligence. Elemental Storm damage cap has been increased. Scaling from damage with cold, lightning, and fire increased to 10%, which is huge. Frigifate damage bonus cap increased by 30%. It doubled. And then scaling from damage increased by 20%. Searing heat damage bonus cap increased by double. And then same thing here with searing heat. And then icefall increased damage. So all of these key passives, or excuse me, the Paragon Legendary nodes that we pretty much use in the majority of our Sork builds... We use almost all of these in every single Sork build. Now, all of this damage is hugely increased. So, Sorceress should be very, very good this season. Now, the Staff of Liam Neeson, we all know, is fanatic. It's fantastic. But, two big changes here. Fractured Winter Glass. Okay? So, we lose the vulnerable damage. Okay? Our non-fizz damage is going up to 75%. Chance to cast Frozen Orb twice is actually going to be on here, as opposed to not. And then Conjuration cooldowns uh, are reduced by 0.3 seconds when Frozen Orb explodes. So when the Frozen Orb explodes, this could mean on the multiple ones that explode from the Conjurations that spawn them. So we'll see how that plays out. Um, so that way you'll be able to manually cast your Conjurations even faster, which is cool. And then, of course, you got your Conjuration Mastery 3 to 4. Now, the unique effect, which is still weird because before... In the PCR, it was at 100%, and then it got nerfed to this. Now they've buffed it, so you can get up to 90% and 65% on the first stack. So when you cast a Frozen Orb, you'd have 65% to spawn a Conjuration. And then on the lucky hit, you'd have a 90% chance to launch a Frozen Orb. So this is much better, especially with that Fizz damage. Now, let's get on to the very last and the best item that's probably going to be in Season 5 for Sorceress, and that is the Blue Rose. Okay, Blue Rose had Chris Strike damage, Ice Spike damage, Lucky Hit Chance, and Mana Cost Reduction. The power did not change. Okay, the power didn't change, but we did get a buff to the damage, which is good. Now, we got Chris Strike Chance instead of damage. And then we lose the Lucky Hit Chance, but we get straight cold damage at 170%. This is huge for all the cold builds. Anybody say Blizzard? Can anybody say, hey, winter's coming? Shout out to the northern men in Winterfell. Winter is coming. 
And then, of course, we still have ice spike damage, but it's been significantly increased. We used to have up to 42%. That's before buffs. And this is all numbers before GA modifiers, guys. So ice spikes up to 350% damage. Blizzard is going to be insane this season. And then we have a chance for ice spikes to explode twice, which is even crazier. So blue rose, big dub. But yeah, guys, these are all the changes. A lot of good ones. I know season five is going to be a short season before we get into season six, October 8th with the brand new expansion. So again, it, play it, have some fun for a couple months, experience these changes before we get to play the brand, brand new Spearborn class. Guys, like the video, comment down below. Let me know what you guys think about these buffs. Again, shout out to Don for sharing the mega sheet and breaking down all these numbers in particular. So big shout out to him and Rob. Thank you guys so much. Uh, comment down below. Well, let me know what you guys think about all these changes. Don't forget to subscribe, guys. And as always, stay gaming, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.